everyone, Justin Bell here on Drive to Win, presented by the Win Las Vegas and brought to you by Mobile One for the love of driving. Well, guess what? We are deep into Ultimate Race Week here in Las Vegas and it has been spectacular. I know we're doing a lot of shows this week, so you know all about the Concours Las Vegas, which was so impressive on Saturday. Obviously, I was hosting that and that might have had something to do with it. Incredible cars, beautiful people, but it really set the tone for everything that we got going on leading up to the Heineken Silver Grand Prix of Las Vegas. I mean, when I say there's a lot going on, the Netflix Cup was out on the Wynn Golf Course on Tuesday. I mean, it had millions of people on the live stream watching around the world. And just seeing that some of the world's top Formula One drivers up against some of the world's top PGA golfers, drivers against drivers, it was it was great fun. And all these quirky, cool things going on, like they had the Squid Games, this huge doll from the Squid Games looking down with their little laser eyes. Let's put it like this. It was the kind of entertainment you could only find here in Las Vegas, which brings me to something I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, but we do have a very special returning guest, this time live in the flesh instead of uh, from down a Zoom call. And Valtteri Botas will be joining me sitting here just in a few minutes. So I'm very excited about that. But also yesterday, obviously with this much anticipated sort of build up to this whole week here in Las Vegas, it has was the opening ceremonies and they were held in the pit lane and with some John amazing entertainers, John Legend, all these incredible people. And it was a fiesta. It was a, fi a festival. It was incredible. All was only done the way that you could do it here in Las Vegas with some sort of mixed receptions, which we should sort of talk about. And some of the drivers find it a little bit too much that that happens. Uh, they find the, the sort of glitz and glamour maybe distracts from what they're here to do. But when you really think about it, um, this, the Drive to Survive Netflix series really exploded Formula One, as we know. It has, I don't even know the exact figure, but it's 40 or 60% of, of growth in the revenues alone from the Americas. Now we have three races here. And that's directly, was, you know, affected by the popularist sort of vote that they've got from ordinary people who weren't Formula One fans before. So, I mean, Max Verstappen said he didn't appreciate it. He felt like a clown standing up there. And it was a bit odd. They were very high in the air on these boxes. And they were just, you know, talk, you know, waving at the fans. And they didn't fill the grandstands, which was a bit odd because they didn't sell tickets to it. So really, all that stuff was very much for a select few people in the VIP hospitality looking down on it. And also, obviously, for the world at large through the F1.com live stream. So it was a little bit uh, mixed, mixed reactions, but some of the drivers really get to grips with it. And rather like Miami, where there was the same thing, people going, I don't get it. Why have we got, you know, it's like a ready to rumble commentator as they came out like boxers into the great music. Some drivers liked it, some didn't. One driver that gets it though is Lewis Hamilton. He just has this ability to understand where almost the pop culture of our sport sits um, with the fans. And he has risen above just being a driver, hasn't he? He goes to the Oscars. You see him at some of the fanciest events in the world, dressed pretty outrageously, but that is his thing. And he's done, in my opinion, single-handedly a lot for the popularity of our sport by bringing in just people from diverse backgrounds that we'd never seen before. So he gets it. Some of the others do, but obviously people like Max, they just want to race. And uh, that is definitely what came across in our conversation, you know, when, when you hear him talk about it. But you've got to remember, more fans, more viewers on TV, more people come to races, equals more money in everyone's pocket. So I'm sure when it comes to contract renegotiation and the millions rack up, maybe you don't mind standing there looking like a clown. I'm just saying. Well, there were so many other things happening last night, and I was right in the middle of it, because after the official uh, welcome ceremonies, the win here held a, a red carpet, which was leading into the XS nightclub, and it was just fantastic. It, I mean, it looked full red carpet. And they asked me, with Jeremiah, my producer, to go there and be representing the win, and they had their own camera crew as well. But it was pretty cool looking down at the you know, ABC News, NBC News, 
uh, Rolling Stones magazine extra. And there were all these little mark, you know, pieces of paper on the floor saying where everyone was going to stand. Now I've done thousands of interviews. I've never done a red carpet. So that was actually very cool for me to be a part of. So who did we see? Well, it was late at night. I don't, I think it may get an award for being one of the latest red carpets anyone's ever been to, but it was probably not starting till 10 30, almost 11. But I was, it turns out, a natural at it. Well, some of the other people, the lady next to us, right, Jeremiah, she didn't even, she didn't even move. She just, I don't think she got anyone the whole time, whereas I was leaping in front of everybody. So some of the people I talked to, Alessandra Aluni Bravi, who is the Alfa Romeo Formula One team chief, he could not have been more gracious and charming, a beautiful accent. And we talked a little bit about the economics of the whole thing. And then Christian Horner, CEO of Oracle Red Bull Racing. And then we, the Ferrari drivers, Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc, they came by and we talked about this funny uh, incident that happened with someone fainting when I was hosting the Ferrari Gala in New York just three weeks ago. So that was cool. And I'd also seen him on the golf uh, course. George Russell with Mercedes. Gunter Steiner came by. Um, it was just incredible. Uh, and then the people I didn't talk to was, well, Toto Wolf went by like the Dark Lord. Lewis Hamilton went by like the Dark Knight. And a whole load of other drivers seemed to blow past us, not caring. Came back the other way a few seconds later. Anyway, why, why am I telling you this? Just take a look at this. Uh, we put together a few clips of the conversations I had just as a good memento of the, of the evening. Check it out. Hey guys, JB here. And I'm on the red carpet at the win. The Formula One drivers are all about to turn up and it's time for the Mobile One Pit Stop for the love of driving. As the team principal of Alfa Romeo coming to Las Vegas, I mean, a lot of new challenges. I bet it's been such a busy season. How have you prepared for this? with so little time between the races? First of all, let me say how much the excitement is to be here racing, you know, nighttime with all these risk factors like, you know, the temperature, like, you know, the new circuit. So it's really an excitement. Of course, the preparation has been similar to other Grand Prix, but everything is new. So we started from the simulator, you know, with the circuit, the real circuit, and then we try different setups according to the different tires but at the end, tomorrow we will discover everything. So this is really exciting. And I think that will be challenging because the track layout is amazing. Now, obviously you are responsible also for the, the business side of this. Uh, from a commercial aspect, racing in Las Vegas, the third American race, commercially it must open up a lo lot of opportunities. It's very important. You know, we are extremely popular in the U.S. with Formula One, thanks to, you know, Netflix, thanks to all the promotion done by Liberty Media, which is a U.S. corporate. But here we really step up. You know, we, we go to the next level in terms of exploitation of the event. We become real, a real entertainment event. This is what Formula One wants to do. Not just be a sports event, one of the top in the world, but to be an entertainment event where everybody can find what he likes to have. And talk about, obviously, we're here at the Win Las Vegas, such a big part of it. The, the scale of this event compared to anything else in the world. Uh, it's unparalleled. You know, you cannot compare. We have seen the opening ceremony with all these artists, you know, the best singers in the world, everything. This is really a new benchmark for everybody that wants to enter in Formula One. Good luck this weekend. We'll be watching. Thank you. Well, Christian, obviously, Las Vegas, I mean, totally, at the end of the season, what a difference to every other race. Yeah. Uh, obviously, an amazing season, but still so many unanswered questions going in here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, been an incredible year for us. So, uh, but this is a new challenge, different, uh, different type of circuit and brand new circuits. And, of course, such a big event. So it's going to be an exciting race. What's it been like in the team briefing, you know, talking to the drivers about and all the crew about coming into Las Vegas? Because there's probably no bigger party city in the whole world. Um, a little team chat up to the guys about, not the drivers, but the team about a little uh, be careful in Vegas till Saturday night? Well, look, there's no need to really. Everybody knows what they're here for. Yeah. And, uh, you, you know, we're here to, to go racing and uh, um, hopefully put on a good show for everybody that's coming to watch. And, uh, you know, if we were to win this race, that would be a... Uh, be a massive, a massive achievement. I'm sure we'd celebrate that pretty hard, but uh, everybody's focused on the job in hand. Oh, well, good luck, all right? Thank Christian, you. thanks. Hey, Carlos. Hey, buddy. I'm good. Nice to see you. Yeah, you're good. You did well yesterday. Thank you. Very that was much. great. Well. I mean, really. So his golf is obviously a pretty uh, big 
part of his character, we've now decided. Yes, he's been incredible yesterday. I watched you. You've been impressing me a lot. <laughs> the Squid Games hole was a good hole, right? That was kind of fun. It was a bit creepy. It was a bit creepy, yeah. But it was a bit creepy. It was totally creepy, and the eyes came round. Did you look? But uh, just focused on the shot, and it was a decent one. But my partner, my teammate, he was incredible. <laughs> he was incredible. But let's talk quickly about the weekend. Obviously, it's. I mean, no one's been here before. It's totally new for everyone. You've been on the sim. You excited for tomorrow night? I'm so excited. Uh, I think it's uh, it's great. And actually, when I tried the car, uh, the the track on the simulator, I really, really enjoyed it. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be an amazing uh, event. Uh, so many people are planning to come here to watch Formula One. So it's uh, it's amazing. Yeah. And obviously, Carlos, seeing the seeing the fans, you get used to crazy fans everywhere. But here, Las Vegas, they have a party already, and now you guys are in town. Are you looking forward to Saturday night? Yeah, I'm looking forward to party on Saturday night because it would mean that we've had a good weekend. Yeah. Uh, until then, not much partying, although we're having to stay awake till late, and I'm still finding things to do to keep me awake until 4 a.m. or something like that. So maybe, who knows? Um, very quick, last question. Who's the perfect wingman out of the other drivers to go on a, a night out in Las Vegas? This guy. I like that. We'll go together. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Have good luck tomorrow. Right. Well, obviously, Las Vegas, no uh, new for everybody, isn't it? Absolutely. So, have you been on the sim much? I've done a few laps. But when you come to a new circuit like this, you need to go in with an open mind because you've got no idea how the track's going to be, how bumpy it's going to be, how the tyres are going to react to the cold temperatures here. So, uh, yeah, I've done a few laps but excited to see what this weekend uh, holds. Now, you traveled all over the world, obviously, and you go to these crazy countries where they have mad fans, but Las Vegas is a party town. I mean, probably bigger than anywhere else. How, how have you mentally prepared for that? Um, I mean, once the helmet's on, all of that is, is drowned out, but definitely excited to, to be here. Some of, here are some of the superstars just... Uh... You good? Yeah. Are you leaving or are you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Everyone's, I'm late to the party, yeah, late clearly. To the party. So, uh, no, excited to see, see what it offers. Yeah. And so, last question. Best wingman for you in, as, on the grid to go out for a night in Vegas? Who would that be? Best wingman? Yeah. Uh, I don't need one, but I'll say, say my teammate. It was time for a good night out in Vegas. Who would you take with you from the drivers on the grid? Nobody, because I don't trust anybody. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hey, buddy. Have a really good luck, all right? Thank you. Well, there you have it. The red carpet's over, and the inaugural Heineken Silver Grand Prix of Las Vegas is officially open. It's been a crazy year, you know, and you end up this race season in the party capital of the world, yet it's all business when you get down on the track. How's the balance for the team getting out there? Uh, difficult here because I still have to get my head around this place, you know, because, uh, no, uh, uh, tomorrow uh, it's uh, actually, we really look forward to go out on the track because uh, it's, it's the only track it has never been closed or it has been closed the first time last night you know yeah. so nobody really knows what is what it will be so you know as a racer you just want to go on the track and see what is happening yeah that we cannot wait yeah. and, and of course you know las vegas is such a you know three races in america las vegas the third of them commercially you're always having to look at the business angle it's a really good window into another area of american economics really absolutely you know it's, it's just like all the three grand prix in the, uh, here in, in the united states are so different between uh, each of them and this one I think it's just something nobody expected to happen ever, you know, yeah. so now it's happening. So it's a great opportunity for the whole sport, uh, you know, being here and uh, taking advantage of commercially, as you said. Yeah. And finally, you know, there's so many characters in the paddock. You're one of the biggest ones. But if it was time for a good night out in Vegas, who would you take with you from the drivers on the grid? Nobody, because I don't trust anybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, buddy. Have a really good Thank luck. You. All right, thank you. Well, there you have it. The red carpet's over, and the inaugural Heineken Silver Grand Prix of Las Vegas is officially open. Hey, race fans. It's Justin Bell here. So what is it about a race that's so exciting? The breakneck speeds? the constant pressure, the ever-present threat of danger, or is it simply the driving? Think about it. No phones, no laptops, no screens, just the world's greatest drivers, cars, and the ultimate freedom. Yep, it's all of the above. Mobile One, for the love of driving. Well, Terry, great to have you in, in real life, not just down the, the, the Zoom like we did last time. Excellent, yeah. Good yeah. to be here. Thanks. Nice. Well, first of all, uh, Welcome to Vegas. I know there's been a big build-up getting here. Like any other race you've ever been in or bigger than Miami? Uh, I would say so. I would say the biggest build-up I've experienced and, and seen, and including yesterday's, the, you know, the 
kind of the launch event uh, on the grid, all that kind of stuff. I've never had it before. <laughs> no, never had it before. But you know, one thing I've, I've obviously the beauty of social media is that people know what you do, what I do, while we're not with them, and they say, "Oh, I saw you went out cycling," which still blows your mind. But you, you always seem with your girlfriend partner to to go and explore the areas you go to by bike. That's so cool. Yeah, I, I found cycling quite a few years ago, like when I really got into it and mm. now I actually, yeah, most times I travel with the bike and yeah, I've definitely discovered it. it's such a nice way to see places. Like the other day we went to Red Rocks, cycled there and, you know, otherwise you just don't see that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, really lucky. Well, the other thing is, as you've probably worked out, you come in one of the casinos and you feel like the world has stopped, right? There's, <laughs> yeah. You never see the light, you don't <laughs> go out. Um, well, let's talk about obviously coming up for this weekend. It's a new track for everybody. So it's a level playing ground, really. Mm. Um, one thing I've noticed throughout your career, and I and I want to bring it up, when when the conditions are, are bad and when, you know, the uh, it may be a bit greasy or whatever it's called, guys like you seem to excel, I think, because of your background from, a, you know, in the stroller going sideways. Uh, and I think you're going to have to pull on all those talents tonight because I think it's going to be pretty slick. I think you're right. I think, you know, uh, first race cars to properly drive on on, on the new surface. Um, obviously, I, yeah, I, I went around today, the track, and I could see a bit of dust here and there, quite shiny yeah. tarmac. So it's going to be a bit of sliding, but I think the evolution is going to be big. So, yeah, it's going to be important to be, like, in driving was being really dynamic, trying different lines and yeah. really trying to find the grip. So you went, you just went and walked it? Did he go out? I went on a bike. On a bike, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it makes yeah. sense, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, and what does the, I mean? What are the curbs like? What are, what's the surface like? The surface seems smooth. I don't yeah. I don't see any any big bumps, so it should be pretty pretty good on that side. And and the curbs as well, they're not very big, so I think you can definitely take them. And uh, let's see if the track limits is going to be a talking point. In there's a couple of corners that the, the white the line one is out actually, here as well. It looks like the yeah. left hander you can cut that curb quite easily. Right? Yeah, exactly. So just need to be careful in the white lines because we have this rule that one tire needs to be still on track. So. I know, I know. It's a and sometimes some discrepancy in the the calling of that. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about that because like often the cars, it looks like the front wheels are are off and, and the rear wheels are still on the track. When you're following behind, there's a lot of radio chatter, like mm. a lot of the drivers go, hey, listen, call the car in front. Yeah. I mean, how does that go down? Yeah, I mean, you want uh, you want other people to get penalties. So you want to report <laughs> exactly. if you saw. You know, yeah, that's yeah. just how it goes. And uh, and in, in with the cars nowadays, you know, they're pretty big. We sit very low with, you know, big headrest. It's not easy to see exactly if you're still on the white line or not. So, Sometimes it's a bit playing with fire, you know? Yeah, and the cars are so wide. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're big. Yeah. That's big. So my whole experience is that I went on the simulator down here, mm. uh, or it was actually down at uh, a, a activation down here, and it's a Red Bull car, and you sit in it, and it's got but the halo. But just looking at the the stupid monitor, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing this. But when you're racing, your your eyes are so far ahead. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, you. You don't really notice the halo. I mean, it's. Uh, I, I think it's actually better in the real car than on a screen, you know, because okay. you can always kind of see see through. So expectations for going out tonight. I mean, this mm. it is the level playground. Uh, yeah. You've done time on the sim. When we spoke on the on the phone, you you hadn't been on the sim yet. Yeah. Um, you've. What's your approach to building up to speed? Uh, I think like any other street track, you need to leave a bit of margin. Like the first lap, you wouldn't try and nail the breaking points exactly. So you might, yeah. you know, give yourself a bit of space. And first of all, I think for us, the biggest question mark is like how much grip there is going to be mm. because it's just hard to predict. So yeah, just build on that corner by corner, try and find the right lines, trying to find the right breaking points and step by step as the track improves, start getting closer to the walls and the inside of the corners and then outside of the corners. So it's just really... Lap by lap. And important today is to get lots of laps. Uh, lots data. Of you need data. Exactly. You? The data field is kind of yeah. empty right yeah. now. Yeah. And, but yeah, it, it is a, the normal standard weekend. So it means we have three practice sessions. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's plenty of time to get up to the speed. I mean, unlike when we all start racing and it's just us and a mechanic, really, you have so many people, you know, such intelligent, you know, resources analyzing this, but they're still just going with a lot of assumptions too. Yeah. Uh, basing it on like a Miami street circuit or, I mean, can't be Singapore. I mean, that's very different. I would actually, I was, the closest track I could compare is maybe Baku. Like Ooh, it's quite okay. long, long straights and then 
quite a few 90 degree corners. Um, yeah, high breaking zones, uh, quite low downforce. So, yeah, something like that. But yeah. uh, like you said, there's always a bit of guesstimation going on. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I, you know, one of the, as a former driver, one of the things that I find horrifying when I'm watching you guys getting ready for qualifying is the closing speed when everyone's having to screw around, yeah. slowing down. Rumor is it could take two or three laps here to get up to tire temperature. I mean, that mm. on a street circuit. And it is like a video game, the speed you catch up. Uh, I mean, yeah. that must take so much coordination with your your crew chief as well. Yeah, there's lots of communication always about the traffic. Like yeah. uh, if you're on a slow lap, um, you you want to get as much information as possible of the cars behind because you also want to kind of choose the right places to let people buy if you're on, on, a, on, a, on a cool down or charge lap. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's always relying a lot on the engineer because, you know, the mirrors we have, they're not that great, you know. Yeah. You can see, yeah, a bit behind. And but some use them more than others. Yeah, I would, yeah. I would say so. Yeah, there's always some <laughs> some guys who, they don't like to move over, but um, at least this track is long, so it means there, there's more space for mm. uh, cars, cars for the track. Yeah, I mean, I just, as everyone has to work together, but if the t if the tires take a couple of laps, it's going to be something special. Yeah, and yeah, if you don't also want to get, like, out of sync, you know, if everyone else is pushing, you don't want to be the only guy being on the slow lap, so... We'll figure it out. Yeah, I know. And obviously, this point of the season, two more races to go. You've had, uh, you know, you've had, you know, you've been in the points four or five times, I guess, and you're, you've had such strength in the races and it hasn't always gone your way. It is always good as a driver to end the year on a bit of a high, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, uh, and updates and things, you know, those days are gone right now, I guess. You're, you're running with what you have to That's the end right. of the year. Um, how do you, I mean, as a driver, you just want to end strong, right? Excellent. As a driver, but also for us as a team. Yeah. You know, we haven't had an easy season. We didn't get to our targets that we set before the season. Mm -hmm. So it would be nice for everybody to have good, two good races to, to finish and, you know, have that confidence then for the winter, for everyone at the factory, you know, to have the confidence to push on and find those gains over the winter. So. You have dealt with <laughs> rabid fans around the world. You've been around this a long time. You have a big fan base. American fans are pretty unique too, right? Mm. I mean, they 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 love football, they love baseball. I mean, they go for it. And obviously the fan base here in Vegas is is probably pretty vocal. You're the kind of, I mean, I know you're pretty, you're so focused, but you've also adopted like a new persona, right? You you obviously enjoy the fans and playing to them. Probably that comes with age as well, yep. a little more maturity, um, being able to spread your time. But uh, do you enjoy that side of it? I mean... I think as my career has went on, I've learned to appreciate it more. You know, mm. That, yeah, they are there. They're, they're there to support you. You know, sometimes, um, especially in the earlier in my career, it was more like a distraction. If there was people always, you know, wanting something, and but now it's um, it's better to take it. You know, it is support. Um, nobody ever has came to me face to face saying you're a bad driver. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's always they always come to you that hey, I'm a fan and keep up the good work and stuff like that. So it's just easier to enjoy than take it, you know? Yeah. And there's definitely different viewpoints with some of the drivers, right? And I mean, the the amount of ceremony before this race, mm. Miami before the race. Yeah. But we do have to remind ourselves that fans equals dollars, right? Correct. Dollars for the team, dollars for you. I mean, it's yeah. it's how it works. But there's a balance on, and mm. how do you deal with that? And I mean, like Lewis is, I mean, Max is very, like, I just don't want to do it. Right. Uh, how, what's your feelings on that? Yeah, you know, I, th I think Formula One at the moment is really booming, I would say. Like, mm. I, I've never seen F1 being this popular and um, it's part of the game. And like you said, you know, without all these fans, yeah, it, the sport wouldn't be what it is nowadays. So there's many times we don't have a choice. You know, we have certain things we have to do. So then I feel like it's about your mindset. Like yesterday's thing, you know, the, the presentation, I thought it was actually, you know, okay. Like yeah. nothing wrong with it. it. It took, I don't know, 20 minutes of our time in total. Uh, it's not a big deal. So it's no. better to enjoy it and, you know, take it in. And uh, so, yeah, different drivers have different views on those things. Yeah. And so, oh, you know, now now you are at this stage of your career and you're able to balance things. Work-life balance seems like you've got that pretty mm. well. I mean, personal life. Um, but when it comes to you know, dealing with the the pressure of racing and training on the road. That's something I, I mean, 
I'm 55 now. And I remember when I was racing all the time, I was like, okay, I've got to go and do it. But now you're like, I'm on the road. And then you go, Shh, shoot, I'm on the road 120 days. Yeah, yeah. And you guys, when you're home, can train so hard. How do you, just as a personal note, how do you balance the training? Because you have to stay so fit. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually with the schedule nowadays, it's a lot about recovery as well. Like it's quite easy to overdo things, but um, I'm lucky because I really enjoy training and and cycling especially. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of enjoy that. And sometimes I need to tell myself, okay, you got to rest today. <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah. more, for me, it's more more that way. But yeah, it's right. With all the traveling, jet lag, it's important to stay healthy and you know, try and have good energy levels for the entire season. That's so important. Especially if you're going to show your bow to us. Exactly. On a then calendar. It's important to be. you got to flex it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Did, what did your girlfriend say? <laughs> was she like, that? you're not ready? <laughs> <laughs> she was actually really uh, encouraging me. And for charity. Yeah, tell us about the charity. Yeah, yeah. so it's actually doing bow to us calendar. Mm -hmm. Launched. Uh, raising funds for Movember okay. and especially for testicular cancer research. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I decided to go all in and reveal myself. Mm. Not the front side, but the back side. Yeah. I'm going to have to get a copy. Yeah. I think that's a, a really, a really <laughs> big, a really so, big part of it. Yeah, so it's, it's 20 bucks. So okay. it's accessible for people and yeah, $5 goes to Movember. Yeah. And then of course you've been mullet haircuts too. You've yep. been, you fully on, but just don't go near the wedding chapel. <laughs> that, that, that could change everything. But, yeah. yeah. So the mullet thing is still going and, and obviously yeah. that's part of the, the fans doing it. What does it make you feel when you have fans come up looking like you? I actually had that yesterday. There was a, we had the launch of the livery for this weekend. Mm. There was a kid, like a, I don't know, only probably four or five years old and he had a mullet and he looked I like me. I love that. He was just missing the moustache. But yeah. It's cool. It's it, like, as commitment, you know. <laughs> really, it's actually funny. If you don't mind, I'm going to ask you to sign a, a shirt. We just, I just bought yesterday. My my partner, uh, business partner's son, uh, Liam. He has looked like you since birth, and oh, he yeah. kind of had a mullet. So they called him Baby Botas. Oh yeah. So cool. <laughs> so so I mean, yeah. the shirt he won't be able to wear till he's about thirty and puts on three hundred pounds. But you know, he's he's going to look good. <laughs> nice. Well, just a, just some fun little questions quickly, just yeah, just sure. to round off. We did it before in our um, time for the mobile one pit stop for the love of driving. Um, what's your pre-race meal? My pre-race meal, it has changed over the years, but this year it has been gluten-free penne arrabbiata with a bit of chicken. Sounds good. Yep. People say you need a superstition here to get lucky in Vegas. Do you have one? Is that right? I haven't heard that, but I don't really have superstition. So No. Maybe I'm going to be unlucky. Who knows? No, it's I just, I think, I think superstitions can only go wrong. Drivers have put their gloves on the wrong way, the wrong socks, and then you exactly. go, what yeah. if you forget the socks? Exactly. Then you're then totally you're screwed, trouble. right? And it's, home. What's your guess on the top speed? I know the, I know everyone yeah. said with DRS is 212, 217. What do you think? I'm not so good with miles, so I'm going to go with KPH. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to, going to say it's going to be more than 350 with a good wow. toe. With a good toe. Yeah. And finally, I know we talked last time, you've got the world covered. You have coffee in the morning. You have your own gin in the evening. You, you've got it all sorted. But for a good night out, who would you, who would you wish to um, buddy up with from the grid? One of the other drivers for a, a really fun Vegas night. The grid. Um, Actually, it could be a former driver. Former driver? Yeah, yeah. Because you've got a lot in your country. Though. I would go for good old Mika Hakkinen. I heard some stories when he was young. Yeah, I experienced them. Okay. So we started racing together. So, so yeah. Should I choose him? Good choice. Yeah. Okay. Just don't, <laughs> just don't race again. I think. Well, listen, it's been so good. I know you've got to go. I mean, thank you for taking the time just no before problem. before practice. We're going to be rooting you on. And thank you. I'll, uh, I'll be waving my, waving my calendar. That's great. Thank yeah. you, Bell Terry. <laughs> That's you. great. Thank you, buddy. Hey, race fans. It's Justin Bell here. So what is it about a race that's so exciting? The breakneck speeds? the constant pressure, the ever-present threat of danger, or is it simply the driving? Think about it. No phones, no laptops, no screens, just the world's greatest drivers, cars, and the ultimate freedom. Yep, it's all of the above. Mobile One, for the love of driving. Well, that was great having Val Terry here and obviously hearing from a guy that was just about to go on racetrack, nice and relaxed, and obviously bearing it all. Talk a man that knows how to bear it all without, thank goodness, taking off his clothes. 
Magnus Walker, good to have you here. Great to be here. You know, I don't have a calendar, though, like uh, Mr. Botas does, but I've seen snippets of it, so I'll put it on the agenda for next year. Well, do you know what, Gandalf? I mean, Magnus, Gandalf, yeah. you could you could have your own, own calendar. For those of you that don't know Magnus, I mean, you are the Porsche file. You're the alternate, side, alter, alternate <laughs> face of Porsche. Um, but also, for me, you're a guy that just loves cars. You this love is true. the this people true. that drive them. And you love racing. So here I love we are you. In Vegas. I mean, I'm feeling the love and you, you cover all those bases. Well, that's it. You, I mean, a very different site, whereas Valtteri has the hair on the back, you have yeah. it on the front. <laughs> that's it. What do you call a reverse mullet? Beardos and weirdos. Beardos and weirdos. Yeah. All right. Well, we're here in Vegas. And I, were you out there last night? I was out there last night, yeah. So what do you think? Sensory overload. I mean, it was what, seven minutes, nine minutes? Yeah. And then it went dead for six hours and then... I was in bed at 3 a.m. and I hear the cars whipping around You're the like, track. What? Yeah, I'm like, this thing's back on. It. Look at my watch. It's 3 a.m. and yeah. you know, four four hours later, you know, it was kind of calm after the storm. Well, talk about. I mean, that's obviously the gorilla in the room that I believe is going to disappear. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, if sure. we have a great run from now till you know to to through to you know the Grand Prix tonight, it's going to be just such a a, a big deal. Um, and it'll be such a success. I really do believe it will be. And you won't forget, you'll forget about a manhole cover. Yeah. It's a couple of days before. I mean, these ha these things happen, right? Happened at Monaco. Yeah. It's happened in a few other places. Yeah. But talk about the show. When you come in, we're English. In England, you know, I was talking to Stuart Pringle, managing director of the the BRDC and and who you know who runs Silverstone, the home of Formula One, the That's home right. of British motor racing. First Grand Prix was held there Correct. in the fifties. As he said, British Grand Prix fans, it used to be a bacon butty, a cup of tea and a grotty caravan and, you know, yeah. and standing in the rain. That has evolved. But it was interesting to hear it from his point of view. The spectacle of Vegas, it is so enormous. It's brought a, a, a razzle, razzle, dazzle, dazzle, all that that no one's ever seen before. Uh, how important do you think that is to building a brand here in, in the States? Well, Vegas is the epicenter of global entertainment and Vegas knows how to entertain and they know hospitality. So that's what they're bringing as a venue to F1. There is something for everyone. It will be sensory overload. What surprised me yesterday that I thought was great is you can actually walk down the strip without a ticket and see part of the race through the fence because I wasn't sure how that was going to work out where were they closing the strip to pedestrians and I was really surprised to find out they weren't. Okay. So, you know, I think there is something for everyone. Like I say, Vegas really knows hospitality and they do it extremely well. And then at nighttime, you, you know, it's not just the lights of the track. I mean, there are other night races, but when you're going down the iconic Las Vegas strip and past the sphere, nothing else like that exists anywhere in motorsport, anywhere else in the world. And it makes me think, how did it take so long for Vegas to get back yeah. on the calendar? been over 40 years. So I'm just excited to be here. There's a buzz in the town. I think people are here because it is the inaugural event to say I was there. Yeah. And I think the real goal is to, you know, to actually see the first Grand Prix and see the first uh, driver to take the checkered flag. I say you're a Porsche man, but you're here with Mercedes. And uh, do you like that little... Did I throw you into trouble there? No, because no. you know, I always say I love both teams from Stuttgart. Oh, you do? That's yeah. true. Not yeah. the third one? You know, I once did the Milia Milia in a Mercedes Gullwing, so, you know. Oh, you got you got the DNA. I'm all about yeah. variety. Yeah. Smiles per mile. Well, Mercedes, we just saw, we just saw a Formula One car. Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton's first, not championship car, was it? 2013 was, he, car that he took his first victory, victory in. in. It just went for how much? 17.1 million at the hammer, but then you got a factor in 10% on top of that, which by my math, this thing's almost 19 million bucks. That's outrageous. A lot man. of money. That's a lot of money. But that, to me, is reflective of the popularity of Formula One. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the world's most expensive car ever sold, ironically, was a Mercedes, the Umlock Coupe, that sold for $142 million. So in a weird way, that makes Lewis Hamilton's car seem like a bargain. Yeah. Earlier on this week, there was a Ferrari GTO sold for $51.7 million in New York. Also makes Lewis Hamilton's Mercedes, kind of a yeah. Formula One supercar bargain, I would say. But that's yeah. Vegas for you. It's all about the glitz and the yeah. glamour we'll on the show. It. Let's talk about the race this weekend. Um, they, get, they got a lot of running in while we were all in bed last night. Right. No, we weren't all in bed, but, you know, we were in you were having respective night. beds. Yeah, yeah. Um, You were in your pajamas. I, I was in my pajamas and <laughs> and God knows what yours would look like. Uh, we, But obviously they were out there banking data, right. which they needed. They needed time, time on track because it doesn't matter 
how much sim work they've done, how much analysis, how much, you know, they, they model everything in, you know, the, in, the, in the factories. And it's almost impossible to know, you know, when you come to a new track, what it's actually going to be like. Right. What you get out break, there, how what much is the surface is? like? What it's like coming down. Everyone's talked about the brakes being cold coming right, into right. the first corner, right by where we were sitting last night. Sure as eggs are eggs, they kept on overshooting the corner while they're testing the mark. And it was funny, I saw Valtteri kind of lock up and go and go in deep. And I'm thinking, that's exactly what he and I talked about on in the going show. In is, is just, yeah, going in deep. <laughs> but also pushing yourself to find the line and, and what you need to do. For me, that's one of the remarkable things. These are 20 of the top best, you know, top drivers right. in the world at the pinnacle of something very, you know, expensive to run. It's a massive industry. Uh, but when you meet them, you've met some of these guys. They're just young kids. Yeah, it's amazing how young they are right? and how down to earth. Ironically, another Vegas moment for me was back in 2017, meeting Sebastian Vettel at the SEMA show right around the corner yep. before he became triple world champion. You know, so it's interesting. The championship's locked up from the driver and constructor's point of view, but I guess people are still chasing mm. points from the manufacturer's point Very of view. So. Yeah. So, you know, it, there's still, uh, still points to be won and dollars to be earned on the track. So I think it is all about finding that line and then just pushing sort of hopefully above and beyond it. Well, you talk about the championships. The, the manufacturer's championship, like I just said in that interview a minute ago, it's a it's a big dollar yeah, deal. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's tens of millions of dollars Good a point. point. All right? right, and and so that's why it's very easy for for everyone sitting at home going. So why did they want fastest lap? Why did why did you know Sergio come in and put a new set of tires on about four or five races ago with two laps to go just fastest to get fast lap? Or right. you know, it's because there's so much bloody money at stake. So we're going to see a very interesting dynamic here with two races left to go. I think we're going to see people really trying to extract the most out of every single bit. Well, Vegas is a gambling town. I heard you say it earlier on. Who's your pick for, you know, top step on the podium? All right, that's a pretty good one, isn't it? Um, Jeremiah, my producer, he's, a, he's pretty good at this sport, but gambling yeah. stuff, and uh, I Let's don't really understand it. Let's go gut feeling. Let's go you, gut you've done feeling a lot on the simulator. Gutting. You set a time. You know the track. I know what's happened. I don't think Max is going to have it all his way, way here. I think he's going to actually... I think this might not be the perfect weekend for them. I just have a gut feeling. Why do you say that? I curiosity. just think, I just think, you he's know. He's won enough this he's year? Won. No, I what don't think this? he thinks like that. I think he thinks, I don't care if I, you know, I punch him to the ground and step on his neck. That's yeah. the way I think he he operates. Right, right. And he'll just keep going for every race. But I don't know. I think there's enough variables here. I think Charles Leclerc, who was fastest in the first night practice, I think he'll be, or the second night, you know, yeah, yeah. practice. FP2. I mean, I think that shows how quick it, quick they are. The Williams could be a bit of a surprise, right? With their top speed on the straight. They've always been fast. Um, but my prediction, I reckon if it gets sporty, I reckon my money's on Lando. I do. Wow, Lando, McLaren. I think it would be a great race for McLaren. Uh, the first Grand Prix held here in Las Vegas, the Stardust Grand Prix, in the, in, was, was uh, they had an Elva. Uh, Bruce McLaren Elva was here. Uh, the first car they ever won a race in for McLaren, bought by Elvis and oh, used in Elvis. the movie Spin Out. No way. There you are. You see, you learn if you hang with me. I, I've definitely been educated. Yeah. Now, you're not talking about Hamilton anywhere in this conversation? Not, not, on the not this one. You I don't, don't, see, you don't it. see it. No, anymore. but I see them doing really well. I mean, the podium is very, very possible because he is a grinder, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you, when you, I mean, you followed Formula One for a long time, you enjoy it. Lewis, I mean, he's not, it's not that he can't win races. They haven't given him the car to. Right. How do right. you, what do you think then? Are you going to go with, with Lewis? I think Lewis could be the surprise. You know, his car just sold for 17.1 million. Yeah. There's some good mojo going there behind him. You never know. Do you see the safety car coming out much? I really hope not. I know we do see it a lot. Do you see it happening? You know, though? there's no track limit issues here because right. the track limit's called a concrete wall. Right, exactly. Um, but if couple, you're in the concrete wall, you're bringing out the safety wall, car. You're going to bring out the safety car. Uh, let's, I mean, last night they ran 90 minutes without anyone to hitting anything. Cause I right. think everyone, I think the news went up and down the paddock. Like if anyone shoves it in the wall, the rest of us are going to be pissed. Let me ask you this because you're a driver a racer. How do you think it was for the drivers when FP1 was canceled at like, you know, 840 or whatever it was. And then they literally had what appeared to be over six hours. What are they doing for that six hours to stay sort of upbeat? Obviously they're not going to the casino and gambling. So no, what are they doing? I tell you what they're doing. Cause I, I, it's a bit like a bit like being at Le Mans. You oh, know, the trouble is at Le Mans, we're planning for, for right. the four hour, five hour break. 
uh, obviously they're very well taken care of here, but they don't have overnight facilities. Right. So where you are know, we going? We have beds. Yeah, yeah. And, and everything. They're not going to go back to. to the hotel. I'm just thinking think about like. this. We have lots of facilities and masseurs and stuff. They obviously have nutritionists, trainers, physios. Um, so I think they're going to be um, very much uh, probably just trying to chill out. There's only so much data you can crunch. Right. Right. right? So so I'm sure there was ongoing meetings because you know what it's like in car business or any business. If you give someone more time. They're going to use it, right? Like sure. building a house. So I'm sure the engineers kept coming back in going, just as Lando was falling asleep. Hey, what about that thing? But um, So you'll pick Lando for tomorrow. It is. But okay. I did, well, I was going to say, I do think they would have just they would have just gone and tried to, into the motor, if they have a motor home, but Got somewhere it. and just relax into their locker room. But that's demanding. They're not all on European time. Right. Because they've been in the Americas now for three weeks. So they're acclimatized. They're acclimatized. And... You you know you never sleep in, in the morning as long you know go to bed at four you don't right, don't right. sleep until three in the afternoon so I think I think it's a really tough demands and coming into today today was the activation day you know this, today was the day when they carry on with all the bullshit that yeah, they have to do for on. their sponsors and running around and everything so I think it's tough hold on yeah but it's a good question thank you for asking that question my pleasure my pleasure um, Formula One obviously this weekend out there if we have a race like this and you, you know. Popular wise, popularist wise, people want the, like the Haas car, right? They love Gunter Steiner. Yeah, they like yeah, those yeah. guys. Yeah, he's, he's well, quite are you a an underdog kind of guy? Yeah, I think so. You know, coming from Sheffield doesn't help. You have to be an underdog. <laughs> yeah, <don't you>? even, <laughs> even school at 15 with 2L levels doesn't help. But, you know, I think you can apply what I have to, en to any industry if you're determined and motivated and you're goal oriented and you have discipline. To me, discipline is being goal oriented mm. and that can apply to whatever it is you want to achieve. And being underdog just gives you more, more spirit, drive, and determination. So, uh, so I don't think it's held me back. Not held you back, but I do think at the back of the grid, it's not holding them back either. I mean, there's a chance here, you know, that if you, we saw some people at Alpha, the Botas, interesting to see how they're doing qualifying, how they're going to line up for tomorrow night. Um, what do you think of Carlos Sainz getting a 10 grid penalty because they had to change the battery plant, they had to do all change the oh, engine and everything. Because of the incident. Because of the incident. Yeah. And he gets a penalty for it because nowhere in the regulations did it say time to rewrite those regulations. It, it is. Think. Or wouldn't you just go down the pit lane with a piece of paper going, uh, Christian Horner? <laughs> yes. Uh, do you let us drive? You know, go to everyone, right? And say, if everyone said it's okay, I mean Let him go for Yeah, it seems a bit harsh, especially because, you know. It wasn't really his fault hitting the manhole cover, no, right? it was not. I mean, which makes me think, you know, what car do they send around the track to make sure it has clearance? You know, obviously well, it's not, not a current not, Formula not one, one with, car at not speed. One with, not one with two and a half thousand pounds of downfall. Yeah, exactly. That's for sure. Right. Okay, final question. Who is your pick for the race? I'm going to go Verstappen. That's my pick for the I race. I never honestly thought you were such a chill that you would just cop out and go for Max. Verstappen. I'm going for Verstappen. Why, you know, why not? He's on a record-breaking year, yeah, it seems. Is. Okay, I was know. just trying to throw some variety into my show, but thanks for just killing <laughs> it. Absolutely No worries. No, no, it was good. I think, I think when everything lines up, even when everything doesn't, Max is the guy to do it. He can start 15th and still win yeah. this race, right? Do the team operate in such a heightened reality don't they? they he's got the drive and the motivation wherever he starts from so yeah. you know it'd be good that's what I'm saying All right. time so will tell we'll money, tomorrow. if you're watching this the betting money Magnus says it's going to be Max I say it's going to be Lando you're going to say Lando All right. that's what I'm going to do well thank you very time much for tell. being a part hey, of this hey my yeah, pleasure really good and of Great course you know we're, we're mobile one guys aren't that's we both of us you've got to stay lubricated you've got to stay lubricated to oh before we go I've got, I've got a couple of uh, fun little know? questions actually right, funny little um, question. can I just grab that very quickly this is totally you shouldn't do this in the middle of a podcast Oh, a little mobile one car there. Actually, I'm just going to grab this. Excuse oh, me. Look at, wow, you guys are so organized. Yeah, yeah, I am organized. We have the hostess, hostess with the most says bringing the, the questions Moses. in right we there. We should do this while you're here. <laughs> Why not? Do you know All what? Right. This is a mobile. This is the mobile one pit stop. Oh, mobile one moment. All right. For the love of driving. For the love. Of, I'm all about the love Things of driving. You got the car here. So, if you're a Formula One driver, and you you got in the points. How would you spend your bonus? What would you if you were there? Their buddy, how would you help them go and spend their bonus? Well, I think you'd have to spend more time in Vegas. Ah, okay. Just Why don't not? leave. Yeah, don't leave. Don't leave. If you could have been a racing driver, yeah. what era would you have liked to have been a racing driver in? Well, for me, I always say my inspiration is late 60s, early 70s. The glory days of motorsport, I believe, was late 60s all the way through to mid 70s. So that's my area of inspiration, but maybe the 80s as well. 
Did you go to the Miami Grand Prix? I have not gone to the Miami Grand Prix. Do you think I've spent a lot of time in Miami, yeah. though. Great scene in Miami. Great car scene in Miami. Do you think the party will be bigger in Vegas than it was in Miami? For sure. Nothing's bigger when it comes to partying than Vegas. Like I said earlier on, it's the hospitality capital. Look at all these pop-up events and bars and hotels and collaborative drops that everyone's doing. You don't see that anywhere else. You know, Vegas is unique in many, many ways. So Vegas for sure is the biggest F1 party anywhere in the world. When it comes to your dream car garage, what are the three cars that should be in your dream car garage? You mean the ones I don't already have? Uh-huh. All right. So if I'm going off kilter, uh, Mercedes Gullwing, yep. Ferrari F40, and maybe I'm going to throw like an oddball, something in there like, a, I don't know, a Lancia Stratus. Love that. Not everyone can be a Formula One driver. What's your best advice you could give a young boy or girl wanting to get into the car hobby? Same advice I give to anyone getting into any hobby. Do what you love. Do it to the best of your ability. Don't worry about what other people think. Stay motivated. Set a goal. Be disciplined. Put the work in. That applies to anything you want to do. Well, thank you very much. Magnus, that was Mobile One Pit Stop for the love awesome. of driving. Thank you very much. Well, thank you everyone for watching. A bit of a complex show with uh, the... Very talented, formidable Valtteri Bottas taking time out just before he went and got in the car for free practice one. And then my great mate, Magnus Walker, for, for coming along and giving a bit of insight as well. Hope you enjoyed it. So much happening tonight because it is the inaugural Heineken Silver Grand Prix of Las Vegas. If you're a betting man, don't don't blame me if it doesn't work out the way I was going. Just blame him if it doesn't work yeah, out, right? Blame that guy over there. Exactly. But listen, we're in for a real treat tonight. The lights of Las Vegas are going to be in full force. And here at the win, we are the epicenter of everything. And it's the tail end of Ultimate Race Week. So a big thanks to the win Las Vegas for their very good hospitality. And of course, supporting the show. And to Mobile One for the love of driving. Enjoy the race. Drive to win. <laughs>